you. Senator Neil O'Donnell. Carlock, thank you, uh, uh, Commissioner. Um, Commissioner, the, the Minister, when she was here last week, referred to impact assessments being carried out by her department and the Department for Justice uh, in the North in relation to the whole Brexit situation. I'm wondering uh, what level of input, what level of participation uh, the Garda Síochána uh, have uh, in that, and indeed what bespoke, individual and unique uh, preparations the Garda uh, are taking on board to deal with any um, followed uh, in terms of the Brexit situation. Um, obviously, I think it's it's fair to say that politically and and for with the best will in the world, I think it's fair to say that none of us want to see uh, any kind of manifestation of a, a hard or negative uh, border. Um, but certainly, there are issues uh, of cross border crime, of agricultural crime, of things that you have alluded to in in, in your report. Um, there has also been, uh, Commissioner, in more recent times. Quite an upsurge, quite a visible upsurge in guardy checkpoints uh, along the border. Um, I'm wondering if you could offer uh, a, a rationale for that, um, and or is that a routine uh, situation, or is that something that has come about directly as a result um, of the uh, recent uh, Brexit vote? Um, thank you, Senator. Yes, we have a number of arrangements uh, in place bilaterally, both north-south and east-west, in terms of the, the, uh, the proposed um, Brexit situation. Um, I suppose what's important to state at the outset is that both with colleagues in the, in the Police Service of Northern Ireland and in t indeed with the intelligence services in the UK and Northern Ireland and colleagues in the UK, our resolve and our determination uh, to continue the levels of cooperation that exist and that have been heard that have been an all-time high will continue. And our focus, our, our shared focus, is ensuring that we protect communities on the island of Ireland, but also in the, uh, between the east-west axis. And that will continue. In terms of the institutional arrangements, we would have input and uh, be consulted in relation to a number of the institutional arrangements that need to be put in place. And obviously, and I think it's important also to remember that even prior to the EU institutions been in place, we have very strong bilateral relationships. We also have experience of having very strong bilateral relationships with other countries who are outside the EU arrangements. So we have experience in dealing with bilateral arrangements. But I think the important thing is the commitment of both our colleagues in the police services and also in the intelligence service to ensure that the service provided to communities is in no way diminished. In respect of the increased patrols around the border, actually that's part of our Operation Thor and also part of our response to the murder of two colleagues, Detective Garda Adrian Donoghue and Garda Tony Golden, who, as I said earlier, whose anniversary occurred yesterday. Uh, that is in response to the, the threat faced by our members, uh, but also in response to the criminality that where people are exploiting the borders, particularly for rural crime, and uh, so that's why there is increased visibility. But of course, it will be very uh, useful as well, those patrols, in terms of any uh, change in arrangements to the border area. Uh, very quickly, Carla, uh, I, I presume, Commissioner, that any, uh, and I'm looking, I'm being cautious in my words here because none of us quite know uh, what's ahead of us in this regard. But uh, in terms of that reinforcement uh, of the border, because what has been made clear from any number of ministers uh, and indeed from the Taoiseach down is that the final decision on the border may not even rest with that north, south or east, west axis. Um, it may rest uh, entirely elsewhere. I presume uh, you will then need to look and prepare, Commissioner, in terms of the resource, the additional resource that will be required for any uh, uh, re-manifestation of a EU um, and UK uh, border. Um, and how does that look to you at this stage uh, in terms of resource allocation? Because I presume, um, given the sheer amount of border crossings that there are um, on this island, that that would present quite uh, a difficulty for you uh, going forward in terms of allocating both personnel and indeed financial and capital resource uh, to that. Well, as you say, Deputy, as the, as the arrangements become clearer, uh, certainly we will be monitoring the situation very closely. We have input into a number of the, the various committees uh, that are in, underway at the moment, and we will be feeding all of the, that information into our workforce plan to ensure that the appropriate allocation of resources are deployed as required. Uh, it's something that we have to, as I say, monitor very closely. We have to wait until such time as the arrangements are finalised. But I think it is important as well, you know, our focus, particularly around the common travel area. We have already started that uh, with colleagues, so that will continue as well, and making sure that the adequate arrangements are in place uh, to enforce whatever arrangements will be put in place. 
Last question, uh, Carla. It's perhaps a slightly unfair one, uh, Commissioner, in terms of asking you what the arrangement would the arrangement remain the same um, post uh, Article uh, 50 being concluded. Um, but are you, from from a organisational and corporate perspective, arguing um, with uh, the relevant ministers and indeed in terms of input into those negotiations that the policing uh, arrangements, which have been M much more fruitful and much more harmonised and much more positive in recent times, that they will be uh, sustained and indeed you and your organisation, as with the PSNI, would be at a distinct disadvantage operationally if um, those arrangements, as they are currently, uh, were to be jeopardised or undermined. Um, yes, uh, yes, Senator. The, you know, we are regularly in contact with officials both in the Department of Justice here, uh, the Department of Foreign Affairs, and indeed the Northern Ireland Office. Most recently, as just over two weeks ago, we had an organised crime cross-border conference, conference where we had our own minister and Minister Sugden from Northern Ireland, and myself and the Chief Constable, and a number of practitioners, uh, not just from policing services, but also from, uh, for example, customs services and other agencies. So the focus on continuing those very, uh, and thank you for recognising the fruitful relationships that have developed and our resolve and commitment to do that, our joint resolve and commitment with colleagues, um, my colleague George Hamilton in Northern Ireland and indeed with colleagues in the UK, that remains resolute. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Senator and Commissioner Twice, you made a very welcome promotion here. Uh, never mind the earlier questioning. Senator O'Donnell was delighted to be referred to as deputy, and we, 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 thank, you, we thank you for that. Yeah, as a demotion uh, or a promotion, and, to be honest. And, and his electorate would be most, most happy with it. Um, it, it comes to myself just to ask.